and welcome to Tea Time with Sarah, where I spill the tea on a bunch of shit. It me reporting whatever the fuck I want. Woo! You don't owe me you how whatever. Me. You should be scared. It's tea time. One thing I do on my platform is spill the tea on the news that the news isn't reporting. A huge part of what should be on the news are missing persons cases, but they rarely ever are. And no, not just the ones with cute young white girls, but the 2,300 people who go missing every single day. Oh wait, that's just the children who are missing, according to Child Find America. If you include missing adults, that number is much higher. I want to report today on two missing persons cases my TikTok followers sent to me. These are from the actual friends and family members of the missing. Angel Yergain reached out to me about her mother, Renee Yergain. Renee was a 24-year-old mother in Torrington, Wyoming, who was planning to marry her boyfriend of three years. In fact, she disappeared just 12 days before she was supposed to tie the knot. Her daughter Angel told me that while she doesn't have the police records to show the police dropping the ball on this case, that the police certainly took their time to look for Renee. The first 48 hours are crucial for any missing person, and the police did not look for Renee in those 48 hours. The police said, quote, it looks like she left on her own, unquote. Why did they think that? Josh Minter, Renee's fiance, told police that Renee just packed a sack full of clothes and would not talk to him about where she was going. According to Josh, Renee took a car she was borrowing and left all three of her children behind. The car she was driving was found days later with her clothes inside at a rest stop. Interesting things to note though. According to Renee's brother, Renee told him that her fiance Josh was beating her. Renee's brother instructed her to take her kids and her belongings and come to her mother's house. She never arrived. Police only took Josh Minter's word and did no investigation before saying she left on her own. What Josh did afterwards was drop Renee's three children off at someone's house and take his own child and left. That's weird. Aren't these the children who were about to call Josh their stepfather? What's going on here? Another interesting plot thickener is that Inside Mystery is reporting that Josh Minter's family had ties with the local government. And we know the government is obviously tied to the police force, as well as works with the police literally all the time. Renee's mother said that Renee would never have left her children without contacting them at all, and that Renee actually had just gotten her tattoo license and was excited to open up her practice, which she had plans to do right after her marriage. If you have any information on Renee Yergain, please call the Torrington Police Department at 307-532-7006. The next case is also from one of my TikTok followers. She is a friend of Danielle Sleeper, who is missing. Most of the people who know Danielle Sleeper, including Danielle's own mother, believe Danielle's husband is behind her disappearance. Hmm, are we seeing a trend here? Danielle went missing in Montgomery County, Texas. Her friend, Cheryl Knowles, said that Danielle was always an advocate for others and always helped people out she didn't even know. Her friends and family said she was extremely cheerful and had a loud laugh. Her relationships with men were always rocky, though, and the men in her life would always turn super controlling, even if they weren't this way in the beginning. This is actually why she divorced her first husband. She took custody of her two children with her ex-husband and at the age of 27 got into a relationship with an old friend from high school, Austin Sleeper. It's said that Austin always seemed super laid back and like I said, they had known each other since high school. But all of that changed when they got into a relationship. Austin began criticizing everything Danielle did, from the way she wore her hair to criticizing her job. He even called her job so much and bullied her when she didn't take his calls while at work that he eventually forced her to quit. Danielle's family said that she was always on edge. Then one day, there was a domestic incident at the home that involved Austin, and Danielle's children with her ex-husband were taken away by the state. The son she shared with her current husband, Austin, stayed in her custody with Austin as well. Danielle had had enough and told everyone she was filing for divorce. In the meantime, she would set up visitations to see her sons that she shared with her ex-husband. The night before one of these visitations, Austin turned off Danielle's alarms, causing her to miss her visitation. Later that same day, Danielle went to the store and saw one of her friends there. The friend told Danielle to come to her house, where they were having a barbecue that day, and invite Austin. Danielle did just that. 
Austin wanted to leave later on in the night after the barbecue, and Danielle didn't. She said her son, she shared with Austin, was having so much fun playing with her friend's son, and she didn't want to stop their fun at that time. This led to a violent altercation right in front of Danielle's friends, where Austin physically assaulted Danielle by forcing her to leave her own car there and to go with him in their truck. People at the barbecue were extremely worried about Danielle after witnessing this altercation and began calling and texting her and never received a response back. Austin actually came back to the same house where they had the barbecue the night before the next day because he had agreed to help Danielle's friend's husband move some things. When asked about Danielle, he said, she won't be coming back anymore. Austin was questioned by Danielle's parents and family and gave all sorts of other weird excuses that made no sense to anyone in Danielle's family. When Danielle's dad asked to speak to his own grandson, the child she shared with Austin, Austin would not let him talk to the son. After Danielle's father left that day, Austin called his own mother to come get the son he shared with Danielle and take him out of the state to stay with her. Danielle's sister and father came back later that day to find the son was gone after this bizarre last minute arrangement. It's at that time when Danielle's father and sister forced Austin to file a missing persons case for Danielle. One thing to note is that Austin Sleeper reportedly knew a lot of people in the Montgomery County Police Department. This case gained some national attention, and when people started to look into it, they discovered it was quite obvious police dropped the ball and never picked it back up. This case was even reported by Nancy Grace, and even Nancy Grace said the police dropped the ball. Austin also never once helped in the search for Danielle. No new information about Danielle's disappearance has come out, and her three sons are now without a mother. If you have any information about Danielle's sleeper, please call this number. Let's hope justice is served one day. Wow, what an interesting pattern we're seeing here. If you have a missing persons case of a family member or close friend, please send the information to Tea Time with Sarah Holcomb at gmail.com right here. Please send all of the information that you can. I want to spill the tea on missing persons cases that have been mishandled. Maybe I can get some sort of attention to them. As always, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more tea. Let me know what you think about these cases in the comments. I'll be seeing you guys back here next time. Bye.